and this is Lit Happens, your celebration of the literary arts here in Saskatchewan. Today I'm very pleased to welcome poet Catherine Lawrence. Catherine, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Can you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself? I can do that. I'm originally from Hamilton and I've been in Saskatchewan for 32 years, just over 32 years. This is my adopted home. I came here for a summer and I'm still here. Mm. And uh, I've been a writer all my life, uh, studied at Carleton University, went into newspapers, moved into corporate communications, worked as a consultant for many, many years, working with nonprofits in communications and, and uh, fundraising. And then I retired a couple of years ago uh, to write full time and, um, and go back to school. <laughs> So that's what I'm up to. And so the poetry, that's, that's quite different from communication and mm -hmm. newspaper. Does that go way back as well? Were, were you writing poetry when you were very... Yeah, I've written, I've written poetry all my life and, um, you know, learned when I was uh, um, in university that there's just no way that I could make my living as a poet unless I was willing to eat cat food <laughs> and live in a basement apartment all my life. Uh, so like, uh, like uh, most every writer in this country, uh, I have always um, s supported my, my writing with, with, another, with other work. Um, I think a study was released a few years ago and the average Canadian writer makes about $12,500 a year. It hasn't changed since the early 80s, so every writer needs another gig. <laughs> <laughs> and and what, what about poetry appeals to you? Well, that's an excellent question. It's the question I'm always asked and my answer is that poetry has always spoken to me. I love the rhythm of poetry. Um, poetry feels like um, something that, that is just in, in, my, in my blood. Um, I've tried to write prose and, and often do uh, for, for corporate uh, reasons, but in the world of, of, um, of fiction and, and storytelling, Poetry is is where I go, so I just it's the sound and the rhythms, uh, and 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 the images are so are so precise and so vivid in my mind that um, that that's how it just that's how I respond. And so let's go back to not your we, we won't talk about your new book yet. Okay. But what are some of the stories that you tried to tell in your in your earlier books? Well, I do um, believe that every writer spends her life. Uh, finding ways to retell the same story. And in my case, um, I'm obsessed with mothers and daughters, and I'm obsessed with, with marriage. Marriages that work and marriages that fall apart. Um, so another way of saying that is I'm, I'm very interested in, in the, fam the family, mm -hmm. and that's what I've written about all my life. And the new book, does that go down that same path as well? It does, in a way, yes. Um, it's a departure from my other two books. My first book um, is titled Ring Finger Left Hand, and it, it um, is written in um, three different voices, follows the disintegration of a family. And my, my second book, um, Ring, uh, sorry, uh, Lying to Our Mothers, is about mothers and daughters. And never mind, um, the impulse behind it was the death of my mother, and it got me thinking about how um, uh, women who, who immigrated to Canada uh, in the early 1800s, how they coped with the fact that when they said goodbye to their mothers and their sisters, their loved ones, they never again saw them or heard their voice or touched them, smelled the scent on their skin. And I just wondered about what that, so I tried to write about that absence and um, I call it a, an, an immigrant tale. Mm. Mm -hmm. it sounds beautiful and and, uh, and and rich and and so what are uh, what are some of the specific things that you you've touched on? Well, it's written from the it's written in one voice. Okay. Um, the character is is uh, named Wife, capital W I F E, wow. and uh, she comes over to Canada for, from England and soon realizes that she's made a big mistake in terms of her marriage and she cannot make sense of the backwoods and how to navigate this rough and foreign place. 
So she retreats inward and she she uses her own her own art, her painting to to keep her um, to keep her sane, if you will. And she communicates with with uh, with the wind and the land and and animals. And in that way, she uh, she's able to make sense of, of her surroundings. She moves with her family uh, in uh, over to the prairies, and um, and it's it's all it, it it's it's like a psychological landscape is another way of uh, of describing this this work. Mm -hmm. And um, so, what what are you writing now? What's your next project? Well, I have finished a, a young adult novel in verse. And it's coming out with Kato Books uh, next spring, and right now I'm I'm uh, sort of in pre-writing stage, uh, re researching and experimenting with uh, with a collection that once again has to do with uh, marriage and divorce. <laughs> and you're studying, so tell us a little bit about what you're studying right well, now. Well, you know, at the University of Saskatchewan, we have a uh, a fabulous program called the MFA in Writing. And I think it's the job of every writer just to, to, you know, keep getting better. And I, I'm a lifelong student, so I've just gone back to to push myself, uh, and ex and explore uh, some new genres, and to use the power of uh, deadlines to really, uh -huh. to really keep me going. <laughs> deadlines are so important for so many writers. Deadlines work for me, right? So it's a lot of fun. It's it's great to be on campus again. Mm -hmm. And what if you if you look forward and you could write about anything? What what, would, what else would you like to write about? You know, I'm writing exactly what I want to write about. I'm just fascinated by the way um, we make the 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 decisions we make with res with respect to to love, and um, and how love uh, sustains us and um, uh, lets us down and is a source of our greatest joy and our greatest sadness. And I wonder what happens to love when it disappears and does it really ever disappear? And how do you make sense of love that produces such great joy in our life as well? So th those are my themes and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm writing about exactly what I want to write about. Well, that's fantastic. There's there's a joy that you mm -hmm. that comes off you when you speak about oh, good. that. And good. there it, and it's something love it, and relationships. You there are millions of angles that you can take. So right. you can't run out of you can't run no, out no. of material. No, in, no, 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 never, sense. never, never. And and the young adult book uh, explores the same the same themes from a little girl named Millie who's ten years old and you know her parents are breaking up and she loves them both and she's pulled in all directions and. And uh, she loves and wants a dog desperately, and uh, you know, lots go on, lots going on in in the in the growing and exploding heart of of Millie, as is so much going on in the in the heart of uh, of, of wife. And we're just about out of time, so can you tell me where we can find your books? Yes, you can um, go to McNally Robinson here in Saskatoon, or you can contact me. Uh, those are, the, or you can contact my fabulous publisher, Turnstone Press, out of Winnipeg. Excellent. Well, thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Catherine Lawrence was our guest today. This is Lit Happens. You can find past episodes on YouTube by going to Shaw TV Saskatoon. My name is Danica Lore. You can find me on Facebook or Twitter, or you can reach me at danicalore at gmail.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>